On today's episode of Locked On 76ers, Keith and I, we talk about James Harden. There have been a lot of discussion about Harden running the point guard position. Is he doing it the right way? Where's the scoring? Is it enough? Well, they're 3-0, and he's done a pretty good job. We need to talk about the balance of James Harden, the point guard, and the score. Next, right here, Locked On 76ers. You are Locked On 76ers. Your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome back. You are Locked On 76ers. I'm Devon Givens from 97.5 The Fanatic in Philadelphia. Sports Radio, alongside my co-host and partner in crime, Keith Pompey, writer, Sixers Beat writer for the Enquirer.com. Keith, what's going on, man? What's popping, man? You good? Uh, yeah, I'm all good, man. Just ready for this game four to start off and uh, get things going. Before we get to talking about James Harden and the impact of what he has done for the 76ers, the balance of scoring and running the point guard position, got to thank everybody for making Locked On 76ers your first listen every day. And remember, Locked On 76ers is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube, right here on Locked On 76ers. We start off with James Harden. Later on, we get into our overall observations of this three-game series so far. Game four tomorrow, big game, afternoon contest at Scotiabank Arena. We'll dive into that. And then, finally, we'll preview game number four to see what adjustments Nick Nurse and Toronto Raptors could possibly make and what the Sixers need to do to finish this team off in four. Keith, uh, James Harden, game one, he had uh, 20 plus points. Game two, he had a lower number in his point total. And game three, he, he, he once again did not score a lot of points, but he had an impact in the games of all three of them and what he has been able to do in running the point guard position. And the reason why we wanted to talk about this one well, because of a lot of the Sixer fans and even outside, because I paid attention to what other people were saying on the outside about James Harden as well, because everyone has an opinion of Harden. There's the Houston Harden, there's the Brooklyn Harden, and now there's the Philadelphia Harden. That's uh, a mix between the Brooklyn and Philadelphia Harden, where his numbers are dropping, of course, as a scorer, but his assist totals go up. And the reason why we wanted to talk about this with people is, what do you want? <laughs> from him because uh, while he has not played perfect games and while he does not have the lift that we talk about and the outside shot is not falling as frequent as we would like for it to the assist numbers stay high so Keith after all of the years that we've watched Ben Simmons in the past and any other point guard that would be there as well and how they ran things he is running the point guard position something that the Sixer fans always wanted for him to do which is or anyone to do, be a point guard. He is doing that. But then I also see Keith when not as much locally, but some, and then other fan bases that have dealt with this with James Harden, watching him so many years, they also want him to score. So where is the balance for him, honestly, with James Harden and what he's supposed to be doing for the Philadelphia 76ers? You know, I mean, it's it's one of those things where if – you don't want James Harden taking over games at this stage right now of his career. I'm not even going to say his career. I mean, it's kind of like, I know they say nothing's wrong with the hamstring, what have you. But if you watch the game, what was it, uh, Wednesday night, it was one of those things where he tried to go ISO. It just like the rhythm just wasn't there with the team, right? To me, he's a better facilitator than he is a scorer right now. I mean, you look at it, he's averaging 18.3 points. He's averaging, what, 10 assists, right? But when you go down to his shooting, yes, he's shooting He's shooting 40, 40, 40, uh, 41% from the field. He just brought his three-point average up to 46.7%, which is great. But, you know, he was struggling early on. Right. He started hitting them late, but early on he was struggling. But I'm here to tell you the Toronto Raptor. You asking me what's the balance? The Toronto Raptors want James Harden to shoot because they feel like 
when he shoots, everything gets clogged up. And it's like he doesn't shoot from a very high percentage right now. Then if he's shooting, Tyrese Maxey isn't going to shoot. Tobias Harris isn't going to shoot. And this is funny. This comes from um, this from come from Fred Van Vliet. It's tougher to guard a guy that beats you with the pass than different guys that shoot 30 times. So James has been dictating the game, controlling, controlling the game from the point guard spot. We still have to worry about Joel Embiid, obviously, and Tyrese Maxey and Tobias Harris and those guys. We feel like they've been making every shot. But James has been locked in from the point guard perspective, trying to um, close down some of those passing lanes and make things a little bit more difficult and crowded. So basically, what they're saying is, okay, shoot the ball, James. We're going to take away from your passing lanes. And they feel like and that's their best way of winning games. Now, doing that, bro, I don't see – the Sixers being successful with James Harden. Oh, you don't see them being successful with Harden doing all that. I don't see the Sixers successful if people want James Harden to be this shooter. Yes, yeah, score. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and look, he can be the scorer, maybe not necessarily the shooter. And of course, he can do both. But um, if his outside shot is not falling, of course, drive to the basket, try to get that way. Obviously, the free throw line. But Keith, isn't this what we've been talking about? Where we're saying, like, look, the guy's been playing well. He's running the point guard position. How many points are are being put on the board from his assists? And they're not just two-pointers. They're three-pointers as well. We've talked about that in the past with Ben Simmons, where he would create so many opportunities with the three-point shot. And why this is important going forward is because he, as Fred, Fred Van Vliet has said, and it kind of makes me feel good about it, is he, is, he has a good feel for what they are doing defensively for him to get the things done that he needs to do as a point guard. So I love what he's been doing, Keith. I really appreciate how he's playing the game. Sure, I want to see the shots fall a little bit more. Even when he's in close and he gets the floater or the layup opportunities, I definitely want to see it uh, fall. But I think he has done a really good job, and this could help them going forward against the other teams if and when they move past the Toronto Raptors, Keith. We do have to talk about a few other things, of course, going forward, which is the uh, the observations of this series so far. I want to get your observations in general of game one, two, and three in totality with this 3 nothing lead, and I'll give mine as well. And we'll do that when we come back right here on Locked On 76ers. But, Keith, I want to talk to people about uh, True Bill, uh, how many of you all out there have been dealing with subscription issues? And you, I'm one, you're one, I know it. We've all done it. There's so many of them, and we forget our passwords, and then we look at the price, and every time we look up, the prices are changing. Well, listen, True Bill is a new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't need, want, or simply forgot about. How many, how many times do you do that? Because there are so many, on average, people save up to $720 a year with Truebill. So I've dealt with it. I've, they've already cleaned up about $200 monthly for me on my bill dealing with Truebill. They have over 2 million users and help save them over $100 million. Don't fall for this subscription scams. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash locked on NBA. Okay, get in on that one. Go right now. Truebill.com slash locked on NBA could save you thousands a year. It's already started saving me hundreds a month. So obviously it's going to save me thousands a year. How many CEOs have gotten rich from a free trial that you forgot to simply cancel? Their free lunch, it ends now, folks, with Truebill. So how many free trial subscriptions end up costing you hundreds? Like I had, if not thousands of dollars long after forgetting to cancel. Fight back against scammy subscriptions with Truebill. Make sure you get involved with Truebill and try to save yourself some money for you and the family. It's the summertime too. You know you want to travel. You know you want to do all these great things. Make sure you save your money and get again, get involved with Truebill right now. Truebill.com slash locked on NBA. It could save you thousands a year. Also, while you're saving that money dealing with Truebill, you can also do what I've been telling you about keeping your body right, eating right when it comes to your snacks. And that is with the Built Bar, 
The Built Bars, fantastic. So many different flavors. We've talked about them before. Mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, the uh, new for the month, white chocolate cookies and cream. How about the marshmallowy uh, flavors of the new puffs that we have, that they have uh, yummy, cinnamony, churro, coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie, so good. These are going to be your new favorite. You can replace these with the candy bars, any pastries that you may have liked in the past. You'll like these. They are covered in 100% real chocolate, low in calorie, high in protein, 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and 17 grams of protein. Don't forget about the four net carbs as well. It's a great product. It can help you once again as you try to make sure you're all right for the summer. We all want to look great in the summer going to the beach or wherever we're doing, and you want to make sure you, you have a little something to snack in, well, you know, snack with, Built Bar. Check it out. Once again, great people with Built Bar. All you have to do is uh, at Built Bar, go to Built.com, use promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your order using, once again, promo code LOCK15 for 15% off Built.com. All right, welcome back here to Locked On 76ers, and thank you for making Locked On 76ers your first listen for your next listen. Check out the Locked On Now podcast for nightly recaps of every NBA game with analysis from our local experts. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. Last night, some big games in the NBA in the Eastern Conference and the West as well, so make sure you check it out, Locked On Now uh, podcast. All right? All right. Got it. Well, keep got to talk about the observations man there are a lot of things that have been going on in this series the Sixers up three nothing right now if I ask you for some instant observations or observations in general because you've had time to think about them uh, over the last couple of days games one two and three uh, what are your observations of this series well you know my observations of the series is that uh the Toronto Raptors aren't a deep team they're not as deep as we thought they were um, another observation that I have is that Tyrese Maxey is de uh, developing and being a quality star, a budding star, so to speak. Quality mm -hmm. that's down right to me. Yeah. A budding star. Um, also, you know, right about now, they haven't missed Matisse Seibel. They haven't. And, um, you know, Danny Green has, has really stepped up and, and played well. You know, he's, he's not like the lockdown as Matisse is, but he brings it on the offensive end. So I would have to say those three things really stand out to me. What have been your observations, Dick? Well, I'm glad you brought up the Danny Green part of it because while we've talked about him in passing and the things that he's done, I've been pleasantly surprised by his play, even in game number one where he shot poorly, one for six from the floor. I think it was overall 0 for 5 from beyond, and he didn't play a high number of minutes. Matisse Thibault had close to 20 minutes in that game, but in games two and three, Obviously, no Thibel in three, but in game two, he shot the ball well enough where Doc Rivers didn't have to lean on him as much offensively and defensively. Of course, he was doing OK. He was doing a decent enough job. Danny Green was while out there on the floor with the other starters and reserves when he was uh, with those lineups. So I wasn't sure if he even had it in him. There have been times where I'm like, Keith, you can't put him on the floor anymore. He's unplayable because he can't run. He can't jump. He's not shooting the ball anymore. It's not falling. Maybe that was just inconsistency of, of his minutes, uh, the time coming off the bench. I don't know. Uh, but to your point of the Matisse Thibault angle of it, he's going to be much more important, obviously, going forward because it just helps out with their depth. And especially uh, if it's the Miami Heat in round number two, you're going to need all bodies. You're going to need all hands on deck for that series. And I'd be curious to know what how Doc Rivers feels about now messing with the starting five instead of just sticking with what has worked so far through the first three games and if they close things out in four or five or whatever just having the success that they've had with Danny Green in the starting lineup spreading the floor like he has so I I, I really uh, like to you know be a, a fly on the wall to to know how he feels if he and the coaching staff are already discussing something like that because Green has been a really good solid veteran presence. Uh, for this team in the starting lineup and playing some heavy minutes where I, I just simply did not think he, he had that in him. So that's one uh, for me. And quite honestly, the other is the defense that the team has played in a, as a whole. Keith, we've talked about it all season long. The issues that they've had are offensive rebounding, 
rebounding in general, transition defense, and defense. And they've been so much better through these first three games. Now, bit them a little bit in game three, but in games one and two in Philadelphia at the center, they have absolutely looked really sharp on defense. The communication is there. Everyone, you can see them talking on the floor since we were there. You can see these little pockets where, or times during the game on the floor where they're talking about maybe a, a miscue here where they had a, 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 a rotation issue because one person went here and the other one went the other and, and, and messed up in that particular sequence. And maybe they got some points. Maybe they didn't. They just wanted to simply correct the issue. And I, I've been really pleasantly, again, surprised with how well their defense as a team and as mentioned, Danny Green, and we've talked about Tobias Harris a bunch and how well he's played on that, that end of the floor. I've been pleasantly surprised by what they've been able to do as a defense. So two observations for me, agreeing with you with Danny Green and as a whole for the basketball team, how good they have been defensively. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, and here's the one thing I will say about Danny Green and Matisse. I, I don't think you could go back to Matisse. You just can't. I, I think, you know, you look at Danny Green, um, you know, they lost the first game that he was in the starting lineup here in the regular season. You know, since that, they won five consecutive games. And even in that one game they lost, Danny played well, right? I think that right now what they did is they made their mind up and they decided, look, we got to bring him off the bench. You know, Danny provides, at this stage, he provides more offense. He's more well-rounded for them. And you look at Matisse, and let's face it, there are times when Matisse, you know, he basically is one of those things where he's auditioning for points in the fourth quarter. Like, I mean, playing time in the fourth quarter. If he doesn't have a shot, <clears throat> they can't use him. Now, this is something else about Danny. He's a veteran. He's a champion. You know, he's played late in the, in the season. He's older now. I'm not saying that he hasn't lost a step. But I think he realizes what playoff basketball is about. So he's giving his all. He's doing that extra mile. And he looks different, right? So so I, I think that yes. has a lot to do with it. You know what I mean? So, you know, he's been playing well. And I look at him. He's been more of an asset than a detriment, so to speak. So, you know what? He, he, he's, he, he's playing well. He's playing well. He has been. And um, as far as Matisse Thibel goes, Again, uh, they haven't missed them so far, but they're definitely going to need them going forward uh, with this next with this next series that they'll have uh, for. So, Keith, finally, uh, on the other side, we got to discuss the uh, previewing game number four, two o'clock start in Toronto at Scotiabank Arena. So, with that, hey man, we got to get some observations, get your thoughts of what needs to happen in the game. We'll do all of that when we come right back next. Locked on 76ers. Shady Rays is an impended sun. Let me mess up, man. I'm trying. I got Shady got me mixed up. Shady Rays is an impended sunglasses company that gives you the features of $200 glasses for a fraction of the price. That means Polaroid lenses, well constructed, durable frames, and the premium high end finishes, right? D, you can't do bad with the premium, premium high end finishes, right? So, look, what you do is you go to Shady Rays, you talk to the people. They'll tell you they'll give you protection for every pair. They will send you a brand new pair if you lose them, no matter what happens. Give them a try, and if you don't love them, you'll pay nothing. D, can you imagine that? Talking about they don't pay nothing is as simple as that. Plus, 10 mils are donated to fight hunger in America when you shop at Shady Rays, right? Now, 50% of two or more pairs of Shady Rays glasses um, will, uh, will, will be backed by over 150,000 verified five-star reviews. So what they're saying is you will get 50% off two or more polarized sunglasses. So you have to use the code locked on for their best deal of the season. I'm telling you, do it today, people. Do it today. Free free is for everyone. So, yes, go do that. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Free is good. Free is for me. Shady race. Free is for me. <laughs> All right. Keith, uh, game four tomorrow afternoon. That's a, a 2 p.m. start uh, in Toronto, Scotiabank Arena. And uh, it's, listen, man, this is it. This is it. So how do you feel like the Sixers being around the team um, and also seeing how they were post game as well on on uh, Wednesday? How do you feel they were emotionally and were these two days off good for them as well as they lead into this game against the uh, Raptors in game four? You know what? I, I, you know what? I don't like the fact that they got two days off. Right. I really? think they played, well, no, nah, I don't. I don't like it at all. Um, I don't like it because they're in Toronto. You know what I mean? Like Toronto is one of those spots where, you know, I'm on the phone with one of my buddies talking about, dude, I'm tired. You know, I just want to get chill. They like, dude, you're in Toronto. You know, you need to go out, go to a sports <laughs> bar. You need to do this. You need to do that. I'm an old head. So that's cool for me. You know, go get a drink. You know what I mean? Go do this and that. These are young millionaires. I don't, you know what I mean? It's kind of like there's certain cities that you got Atlanta, you have Miami, you have Houston, you have Toronto. A, a millionaire can get in trouble in Toronto. So, you know, I don't but know. It's a, but it's a business trip. Are they not treating it as a business trip? Man. I mean, okay. Like, you think about when you were an athlete, but you're still an athlete, but when you want stuff and y'all went on trips. The game, you thought about the game, but you also thought about the good times you was going to have after very, the game. Very true. The night very before true. the game. So, you know what I mean? I'm not like, nah, man. Like, I, I don't like having two days off in this type of city. Now, if they were in Cleveland, they would be raring to go. But I don't know if I really, you know, like that at all. Well, Keith, you know? what, what do you think is going to happen when uh, – <laughs> what do you think is going to happen when uh, Miami – it's the same thing. It's the same thing. You know what I mean? It's the same thing. I just don't know if I like having my star players in these type of cities. Because what can happen is, I mean, you think about this now. Last year, the Sixers played against the Atlanta Hawks. They go to Atlanta. They go up two, two games to one, right? Everybody was, they win the first game. Then they had two games off. And then they lose it. You know what I mean? So, like, I I, I just don't like those type of momentums. Like, okay. I'd rather have them go to Brooklyn. <laughs> like, at least New York is so close that to where it's like it's not new anymore. You know what For I mean? Sure. Yeah, Canada is a different animal. I heard, I've heard, and that it's, it's pretty nice up there, and it's a good time for people to want to go out and have a have a nice time. Oh, it's beautiful, and it's beautiful up here, dude. It's real diverse. I mean, Toronto is one of my favorite cities. I just don't know if I want my team having two days off in Toronto. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, I'll, I'll go the other way on this one, and I'll say that uh, I, I think that as far as the game goes, it's good for them to have the two days off in terms of resting their body a little bit. Now, I know if they take care of business on Saturday, they're most likely going to have a full week off <laughs> until they begin the next series against the Miami Heat or the Atlanta Hawks. So. Uh, I, I get that, but in the moment, especially with Joel Embiid dealing with the the uh, thumb, seeing him messing around with that, and any other. And look, Danny Green played 41 minutes, right, Keith? So I want him to get as much rest as possible and get ready for this closeout game, which is always talked about as being one of the hardest things to do in sports, that closeout game of any playoff series. So uh, I actually think that they'll once again stick to the game plan and continue to just play the way that they were playing. It got away from them in game number in game number three. Now get back to doing what you were doing. As Doc Rivers said post game, you can't. They they got away with one. Now you have to go out there and beat a better team again from start to finish. Hold off on those runs that Toronto will of course throw at them, and, and close this series out. You don't want to extend it if you don't have to. Now they're up three nothing. I think the uh, number is what 173 and zero. Of, teams that have been up uh you know with a, a big substantial lead in it and um commanding lead in the series so i i think they'll close the series out on sunday key saturday sorry 
Yeah, I mean, I, you know, for them, it, it would be nice. But I just don't like, again, I just don't like being in okay. here. I love it for myself. Sure. Next, but but I'm not that young dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> that's, 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 you Absolutely. Know? Yeah. Absolutely. I, yeah, I'm not that Well, dude. they're not well liked. They're not well liked in Toronto. So maybe they decide to stay in. So. And you know the only thing I don't like about being here? So I, I, I love Toronto. But in order for you to watch a game, at least in the hotels I stay at, you got to leave the hotel because all they have is like t- – uh, they have like, you know, their version of ESPN, but you don't get, oh. TNT, you don't get TNT, ESPN, ESPN. You don't get any of that. So, like, it's one of those things where, you know, I got to go out, watch the Understood. game. You know Understood. what I mean? Go to the sports bar. And so it's like – and that's cool. But at the same time, you know, sometimes you might want to just relax in your room. Yes, relax I get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I get it. I so. get it. Well, listen, man, thank you. And thanks to everybody out there for making Locked On 76 as your first listen every day. Uh, we'll get back with you on Saturday after the game. And we will dissect game four to see if the Sixers close out the series or the Toronto Raptors extend it to a Monday matchup with the Philadelphia 76ers. Now, make your second listen Locked On NBA. Locked On Experts covering the biggest stories around the NBA every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes is free and available wherever you get your podcast. Keith, enjoy the rest of your day, man. Really appreciate it. And uh, we'll catch up tomorrow, post game, maybe right. talking about a series win. And I just want to let y'all know let them know you can get this podcast, subscribe to this podcast wherever you subscribe to podcasts at. And secondly, I want you guys to click on that Liberty Bell on our YouTube, Locked On 76ers YouTube channel. That way you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You get to look at D and laugh at me. And after that, (laughs) we're good. But I want to thank y'all for listening, and I want y'all to have a great day. All right, D. All right, man. Keith, I'll talk to you later. See you, man. All right, peace.